Hello, Quilt family, my Welcome Home Club members. We have finally reached month three, part three. Who knows what month we're in actually anymore, doesn't matter. But we are at part three of this quilt. And that means that this month we will be working with these center courthouse step blocks. Last month we did these guys in the corners. And remember all four blocks are made from the exact same pieces. We just have two different arrangements of those blocks so that we can achieve that sort of mirror image flip. Um, you really see that with those in the center this month because of that blue creating a wider blue strip in the center. And I really like how you can really pick up on the graphic of the design this month because it's sort of, even though it's courthouse steps, the colors are organized, so it kind of makes this spirally and Greek key design towards the center, which I think is super cool. Um, since we've already been through the basics of the courthouse steps, this month I'm gonna do a tiny bit of sewing just to talk about what I do at the machine when I'm doing patchwork um, with finger pressing and all that. But first, let's go over the fabrics that we're using. Now you might remember that you're a little bit ahead this month if you cut all of month two pieces because these two different fabrics, you should already have leftover strips that you would have cut and reserved last month to use this month. We are using the other colorway of London um, to get that pretty little rose in the center. We are using this colorway of New York and we're gonna be a little bit fussy about that cutting. And these guys, we don't have to be fussy at all. We're using the little Nashville, the larger Nashville, and we're using this colorway of Chicago. Um, it's nice when some things are not fussy cut. Um, let me go over, over the cutting. So, um, for, first of all, the first cut, um, instruction is for London. That is to get this pretty little um, rose in the center. I pretty much showed you this trick last month, but this is one of my favorite things to do when I'm getting a specific square or rectangle, even triangle sometimes, um, in a specific size for fussy cutting. I just use some painter's tape and mark out the four and a half on both sides. So it makes it really easy to visualize um, your center there. And again, these are not like graphically perfect centers, so it can be a little bit rough, but um, so I would lay this down on top of the fabric, cut on these two sides, and then peel the excess back, and then turn it around, line the blue tape up then with the size that you just cut to cut the other two sides, okay? So that's how I got all my centers. And then, um, I don't think I did it last month. Isn't it amazing? I can't even remember. But I didn't realize that I had this little two and a half inch strip, which comes in really handy when you're cutting two and a half inch, um, or I had this two and a half inch ruler, comes in handy when you're cutting two and a half inch strips. So you can see that for all the other fabrics um, this month that are gonna be sewn concentrically around the center, that we have these guides, um, specifically on this one, since it's fussy cut, it shows a guide of, um, you know, you have your 16 inch lengths, your 12 inch lengths, your eight and your four, which you can get on the same height. Um, the cool thing about this is that um, whether you marked it with tape on a bigger ruler or that you know, or you know that, you know, an inch and a quarter is the center of this, you're gonna lie, lie that inch and a quarter mark down in the center of all those orange triangles all the way down. So when you're cutting out this fabric, you are just gonna be laying those, you know, you can start with your 16 inches, just cut it top, 16 and a half, cut it top and bottom, and then you can just cut your widths across. Um, you are gonna have a little bit of loss on the inside, so every time you cut, there's this tiny little strip that goes away, but I really think it's worth it to get those little towers kind of in the center there. It looks really pretty. And then these are awesome because you don't have to worry about how they're cut. And these are all cut on width of fabric. And one hot tip that I realized when I was cutting my strips out today from this fabric, which is Nashville, but it's fabric J, you can actually, it asks you to get seven width of fabric strips. And then from that, you cut four 20 and a half. You cut four 16 and a half, four 12 and a half, four eight and a half. Guess what? 
actually only need six width of fabric strips because you can get the 12s and the 8s out of those same lengths. So that'll save you just a little bit, give you kind of a bigger scrap when you go to make some fun leftover projects. Um, but what I wanted to show you today is just the concept of finger pressing. So if you're someone that um, either you have a tiny little iron set up right next to you, which is super cool. I don't have one of those because I can just like basically picture myself like knocking it, burning myself because it's too close to me. I've always traditionally set my iron up as far away from me as possible because it forces me to get up and move around, get some circulation flowing. Um, I completely get that at the retreats and the sewing days that you want to take your little iron and have your whole station set up. Um, but I don't do that. I tend to, even when I'm working on something this large, I have this all laid out now um, in the exact orientation that it needs to be for one type of the two blocks. Um, I really prefer to finger press and just trust that that's going to be enough and make sure that when I'm sewing um, the next strip on that I've got the um, seam allowances pressed the way that I want them just by pressing them with my fingers, okay? so. In this block, I really like, and in most blocks and even most quilts, I really like pressing seam allowances away from center. Um, this isn't a situation where you have intersections that you want them, go, one going this way and one going this way, so that when they join, um, you're kind of splitting the bulk up in two different directions. This is a little bit different, so I always say to press out. Um, so I'm just going to show you here. So this is just two of all my pieces. The other two I've reserved to lay out in the other um, orientation. So I'm just going to so show you here. I have to take my shoe off because I have to sew barefoot. Don't ask. Um, how I do that. So, um, and I might as well go ahead and tell you just because I do get asked frequently. Um, I don't use a quarter inch foot. I don't know why. Um, I think that sometimes when you have angles and points that are sticking out beyond that quarter inch foot, I get annoyed with having to trim them off to go. So I tend to use just the traditional um, foot and just keep my eye on the quarter inch mark as I'm sewing. Um, I also don't use the shortest possible stitch, like the, the default on this Janome is a 2.2 stitch. I go ahead and go up to like, 2.8 or somewhere just under three because I find that that's perfectly suitable for patchwork. I also find that if I've made a mistake, it's um, less annoying to clip out something that's closer to um, three um, in the stitch length than it is down at like two or 2.2. So I'm just going to begin sewing. So courthouse steps tell us to sew one side and then the opposite. So we go top, bottom, left, right, top, bottom, left, right, top, bottom, left, right. I don't pin when I'm doing pieces this small and precise. I also really like layering up. Um, if you had multiple blocks, I love layering them all up like this because it's a quick check. You can look back and see where you are. All right, instead of like going like that and sewing this on the wrong side. All right, so I've got that um, center rectangle done. I'm just gonna kind of take my finger and press the seam allowances out. And sometimes I sort of tug on this a little bit just to make sure I've got it pressed back. So then the next step is I'm gonna sew one of these guys on. Now, because I wanna make sure that my seam allowances are pressed out. I'm not gonna feed it in like this. I'm actually gonna feed it in like this so I can keep my eye on it, okay? I'm like two different heights today. How cool is that? And also if, you know, when they join up, if they don't join up, perfectly when you hold it end to end, I am way more likely to just ease it in. And as long as I know that my cutting is accurate, I'm way more likely to ease in um, a little tiny discrepancy at the end than I am to go take the time and trim that off. Now, does, and again, we're just gonna make sure that those are pressed out. 
Does that yield the world's most precise chiseled from stone quilt? Not really, but um, I have found that the methods where I follow some technique but don't kill myself <laughs> yield what I'm happy with. And that is a quilt that looks like it was made by human hands. Okay, so you can see there that I've been able to get these pressed that way and that way, and then the same thing is gonna go for the next round. We'll just sort of make sure that these go out. You can see too that I have not even taken my finger and pressed along here yet, and that's because I've already got this seam allowance going that way um, and laying, because that patchwork intersection right here cr creates bulk, you can see that this block wants to be pressed out because it's naturally doing that. And I always think that is such a guide. Um, there are rules, press towards the darker side and not the lighter side, press opposite directions. But I have a, I've kind of learned over the years and looking at the back side of my quilts a lot more than I look at the front side of them when I'm sewing is that it will kind of tell you which way it wants to be pressed. And I think that um, a good basic rule is just do exactly what it's telling you. So then I will just continue, right? So I'm gonna give that a good, maybe up at these corners, it's kind of like wanting to pull back in. So I give that a good finger press before I go and sew that to that. So that is really it. That is really it for this month. Um, I hope that you've been enjoying it. I've been loving watching some of you finish already. Some saying I haven't even started. All of it is okay by me. Congrats on being exactly who you are with an actual life um, alongside your sewing life. I'm happy to be your pal in this process. And um, just leave me any notes if you have any questions about this month. And uh, carry on, and I'll see you for part four.